Put your key. Go. Today. We'll do a video. About. What's been going on. So I wanted to do daily videos. But. I made that decision right before. Trying to do the quail. Meeting. Video, but that's okay. I have a really crappy camera anyway, so. Um, but uh, and this is probably gonna be a long video, just because of how Monday turned out. It was very, very difficult thing. Um. Here, Damien. Damien, will you take that to the other room, please? Pretty please. Like what? The the loud singing. Will you go and do that where you were in the living room and not over in here? Okay. Thank you. So um so Monday came, my husband had to work. And there was a chance I wasn't going to make the meeting because he wouldn't make it home in time. Well, he made it home 15 minutes later. And as soon as he did, all of the anxiety I was feeling on whether I was going to make the meeting or not suddenly turned into anxiety over the fact that I was going to be in front of people. And my social anxiety really kicked in hard. And... Um, it's what makes trying to achieve dreams very difficult, especially when it's reliant on social acceptance, which is, you know, trying to get quail approved to have in the yard is very much bare bones. You're seeking acceptance from your peers um, to approve of your idea so that you can do something you enjoy. And when you've grown up, like me, constantly rejected by your peers, um, it's very difficult to have any confidence in what you're trying to present. It doesn't matter if what you're presenting is actually an alternative to something that's already approved. Like, basically, with chickens, chickens um, can be a good backyard animal, but they can also be, um, they are loud, they can be obnoxious, um, they can cause trouble for neighbors if they get out, um, they can just cause trouble for neighbors by being very loud, uh, they, their poop and stuff can get super smelly, super quick. Um, and there's just a laundry list of uh, things that uh, that you have to deal with um, or the community has to deal with if you have chickens. And, um, and chickens are approved as long as you pay that $5 you know, licensing fee each year to have them. Well, quail is, they're quieter than chickens, they don't smell as bad as chickens, they're kept enclosed so they don't, they can't roam freely, and so logically speaking, quail is actually a better option to allow in the backyard because they're less detrimental or intrusive to the community and neighbors. So logically speaking, there should be no issue with trying to get this ordinance And so there shouldn't be an issue with me coming up in front of my peers to, to, to do that. And you can tell yourself all that logically, but years and years and years you just deal with this, this rejection over you being yourself. And um, you just you lose complete confidence in yourself. And then, you know, you put so much importance or stock into something. You really want something so bad 
and the anxiety just gets so overwhelming. It's like, okay, I really, really want this. This is really, really important to me. But you have no faith in people making the right judgment because you're so used to people purposely making the wrong judgment just because they don't like you. They purposely decide, you know what, this would make sense, and this would be a really great idea, but I don't like them, so I'm going to say no, because that is human nature. It's sin. And, um, and so I just, I got hit really hard with this panic attack. I was on the verge of just remembering it right now. I am, I can feel the, the, the tingling and the tear ducts in the back of my eyes and stuff. Uh, but I, I was on the verge of tears, and I knew if I went up there in front of all these people, I would just burst into tears. And nobody up there would care that I was having a panic attack, or that it was so difficult for me, but I pushed myself to do it. They wouldn't see any of that. All they would see is a woman bursting into tears, um, probably trying to get some kind of sympathy to get this to pass, and just automatically just say no. And so I'd be shooting myself in the foot in that regard because of it. And um, my husband, who has a lot more confidence, and he has a lot more um, understanding when it comes to laws and ordinances and things like that, so he knows how to answer certain questions, or he would know how to respond when suddenly being interrogated over the uh, the subject and stuff um, from those standpoints. So, but he couldn't come with me because somebody had to go to Damien because Damien can't go. Because um, you know, as well as I do, masks would be required. My son can't handle a mask. I was already on the verge of a, a panic attack, so there's no way I could have handled the mask even if I went, now that I think about it. Um, because masks are panic inducing to me. It's, it's a sensory thing. It's, it's how it feels. And people don't care. People don't care that you have an, a legitimate issue. People just assume Sorry for the squeaking, one of the one of the our mice is uh, playing on the wheel. So people just assume you're just you're using it as an excuse to be difficult and that you don't really have an issue. That's what everybody always automatically assumes. About anyone that they meet that says that they have an issue. They just assume it's a lie. Or it's a manipulation. Or whatever. So me and my my son don't leave the house. Um, I've left the house a couple times when I can manage to wear the mask. And I do. I do put forth an effort because, you know, I understand that they're necessary and, and all that in society right now. But it is difficult for those of us who are, who have panic-induced attacks because of the sensation of wearing them and the sensation of breathing in that warm air and feeling like you can't breathe. You can tell your brain, like I, I'll stand there and go, it's just air, it's just a slightly different temperature air. The moisture in the air as you exhale is held there more so by the fabric, but the gas, the carbon dioxide that you're exhaling is moving through the gas, and oxygen will come back in through the gas when you inhale. So you're not breathing in carbon dioxide, you are breathing in oxygen, and you are getting plenty of air. You can tell your brain that while you're having your panic attack, but you're still having a freaking panic attack. And it's frustrating. It is so frustrating. Um, for something that's so easy for everyone else to do, and you can't. It is so upsetting. I have always had this issue with the whole breathing thing. I, that's why I don't kiss. That's why I can't be up close and personal with people. Um, I've always, since a child, been like that. And I was like, and I always grew up going, well, you know, it's an issue I have, but 
it's nothing detrimental. It's a little minor thing, you know? It's a little minor thing. Now, it keeps me inside my house. It keeps me from being able to do things. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, I, I did make it to the meeting, which was very upsetting. Um, my husband told me to just go home. Well, he suggested. Uh, he made a very convincing argument that, you know, if I was really having this much of a struggle, I should probably just go home and we'll re-fill out the form and um, try and get it to where we can actually take the time off. You can take the time off from work and schedule it well in advance to fill up so we can both be there. And hopefully nothing is too much has done. Um, so that, because I'm the one who knows everything about the quill and he knows everything about, you know, the legal yes and no's. Um, so we'd both be able to present it from both sides together. Um, and uh, it would just help me a lot in terms of my confidence because then I can go, okay, well, I know that they're probably not going to listen to anything I have to say. And, you know, yeah, they're not going to like me, but they'll like him. He's, he's like them, you know, he's not autistic, he's not different. And so they'll take what he says and actually consider it. And so I'll have a little bit more confidence in it because, you know, if they have to listen to him, you know, have to listen to me too because he's with me and it's kind of like a, a filter. I think of it like a filter, um, filtering the information through him so that they will accept it um, because they're not going to accept it if it's just me. That's, that is basically what life has taught me. And uh, it's difficult. It's hard. It's, it's not easy. Um, but that's how Monday went. Um, I'm still, I'm, I'm, the other thing is I'm really disappointed in myself for not being able to just get over it. Because that's what everybody, you know, people who don't understand, who don't experience the things that, that people who have anxiety, um, who have been ostracized and treated poorly by their peers, those people don't get it. They just say, get over it. You know, and I was even one of those people, you know, I was very, you know, mind over matter, you know, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. And I try so hard to still keep that because in a lot of ways, yes, it's true, but sometimes your mind just isn't enough. Um, when your mind is what's working against you and you don't have complete control of your subconscious self, then mind over matter isn't always going to work. So, so I, I try not to give myself too much of a hard time, and I just instead focus on I need to work on on getting a little bit better. Because there, you could just, you know, um, I need to work on getting better at not caring so much is the best way to put it. Um, but it is what it is. So Quail's on the back burner right now. I mean, technically we could build the hedges and have them in the house and everything, but I really don't want birds in the house. Um, because birds in general, you know, they have, um, they have dander, you know, and these birds, they need sand for dust baths. So there's there's that flying around in the air. Um, then they molt and lose feathers. That gets everywhere. You know, and then, you know, the poop and everything, which you clean, if you design your hatch right, you keep it clean, it's not too big of a deal, but you still have all those dust particles from the, 
the bird bats and, and the birds give off uh, the the bird dander will get everywhere in the air. And um, we already have enough in the air when we have to deal with the ashes and stuff um, from the winter and the dust and the animal fur. And I just don't want to add on top of all of that. Um, we'll be adding enough on top of it with doing the uh, rabbit toes indoors. So, but really, if we can, I would prefer to have the ash outside. I'd prefer to have all the rabbits outside too, but that is what it is. So, um, so we're going to just focus on the rabbits. Our plan now is in January, once all of Christmas is done, because we're able to get all our tax data done. So January, when we have some extra money, we're going to put it towards being able to do the framework or as much materials as we can afford at the time um, towards the rabbit hutches and start working on those. We're going to build uh, two rabbit hutch systems to go out on the porch, and then we'll do the um, uh, three rabbit hutches that will have larger space to them to provide plenty of space for the kids to grow in um, up here in the uh, upstairs. So and we'll probably have a second, a fourth hutch um, for the grow outs or the separated um, grow outs or whatever if we need to. I gotta do a little bit more studying on reproduction um, versus like when they become uh, sexually productive versus when to harvest um, or when to uh, cull. Um, so I gotta look between those uh, timelines and see what we're gonna need. But basically, we'll build the hutches between from January to February, um, and then hopefully by March we'll have all of the hutches and all the supplies and everything gathered that we need um, to get the rabbits started, and then we'll get the rabbits hopefully in May. And it's fifty dollars per rabbit. I figured. What we'll start is with two does and one buck. And then from the two different litters we'll deal with the two does, we'll keep one female and then one male from the opposite litter that females keep from um, to help spread out the, the bloodlines and stuff. And then we should be good um, for a while until we have to replace uh, our breeders. Um, but, uh, but that's the plan for that. Um, today, the last few days I've been kind of under the weather too. Um, cold, female thing. Um, and I'm starting to feel better. It used to be a little personal here, but a little bit more personal. But um, so for the last few years, I've had it where I feel like crap all month. But then during that monthly period when I'm supposed to be feeling like crap, I'd feel great. I'd feel I'd have energy. I'd be I'd be my old self again. And one of the reasons I started taking medications and stuff, there's several reasons. There's the anxiety, there's the pain, there was the lack of motivation most of the month that I was having some issues with. And so we started trying to take, especially when I started taking the Prozac. And then I, I switched over to the Cymbalta. Um, and that was to try and deal with whatever it was that was causing me to have basically the reverse effect that sometimes does happen to women. And in other women, those things have actually helped fix it. Well, it didn't do it for me. Instead, it just made me apathetic. I didn't worry about anything. It took away the anxiety. And my pain went away because I didn't have so much anxiety to keep me all tense and everything. Um, and it has, a, the Cymbalta, I think, has a, a painkiller element mixed in with it. So that was helping with my pain. Um, but then I couldn't sleep. I, I mean, literally, I was not getting sleep. It was like I'd lose consciousness for some time. And then I'd be right back. There was no deep sleep for me. At all. It was just like my brain shut down 
uh, the, the conscious part shut down, but the rest of the body that's supposed to rest didn't get its rest. Um, it's like being in sleep for a computer. Like, you know, you get your computer and it's on, but then it does sleep mode. It's kind of like that. It didn't actually fully shut down and be able to rest. It was just, you know, in standby. And uh, doing that for oh, about half a year to almost a full year wears you down really bad. Um, but I got off that medication and um, now I'm taking this supplement um, from Life Advantage. I'm doing this high synergizer or synergy um, mix of supplements. Um, and it seems to be helping. My everything, I'm back to most of the month, I'm actually feeling, you know, I've got this that spark to do things and get things done, and now during the actual monthly time, I'm feeling like crap. So, things have basically reversed and gone back to how they're supposed to be. Which is a relief, but when you got so, when I, I mean, uh, years, I was dealing with it the other way around. And so, like, now I gotta get reused to this, this new setup. It's a good thing. It's just I gotta readjust once again to um, how my body's responding and what, uh, how, how things work. So, um, but I'm starting to feel better now, so that's. And that was why I didn't do the daily. I wasn't feeling very good. And I had uh, fallen behind, and I was really upset over not making that meeting. Very upset with myself for not being able to make that meeting. And um, and so, um, moving on, now uh, we made some progress. So today, um, I did a little uh, lesson thing with Damien. Cleaning stuff and um, working on him learning how plants really work. I want him to, to learn not just the basics of how a plant works and stuff, but I want to learn and or teach him how, um, you know, specifics about garden plants and in the garden and food and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so what we did today is uh, let me make sure I got some plants going on here. I took out um, I want to move you guys up here. Okay, there we go. So I took out these. They started to grow mold on them. I didn't want that in there. Um, I have my little paper here on the on the floor telling me what to let. And uh, it's only been a couple days. See here, we grew, well, we started this up on the 15th, and this was on the 10th. These guys are coming along really nice. Um, putting them in that greenhouse thing seems to be working pretty well for them. This, um, I didn't think was going to, to grow at all. Look at that. I don't know if you can see in there. Can you see in there? No. Uh, there we go. Let's see here. This camera is such a piece of crap. Anyway, um, so this basil actually is growing. I, I it was a gimmicky thing, so I really didn't think it was going to, but it is. So that was kind of that's kind of cool. Um, here we have a lot of lettuce starting to sprout. Let's see, we've got so far our yeah, our iceberg lettuce has started sprouting. Our black seeded lettuce, our collards, our romaine is starting up, and our buttercrunch. So these are actually starting to pop up. Um, I'll have to trim them out. I put a little TNT in some of these. Um, 
And I only got the one sprout going on right here for the for the um, lettuce. So we'll see. In fact, the seedy. Yeah, we'll see. Um, none of my herbs seem to be popping up yet, or my onions, but they've got different germination rates. So we'll see. Um, we'll see how they do. It is warm. This heat mat mat is kind of nice. Okay, so we did that. Now Damien has decided he wants to. I told him he had to grow. Yeah, there's two two plants he gets to grow, and so he is the one who filled these up with soil. These um, I still have the lid, but these were for um, they had a little. Spoons, and this is where to hold like flour and stuff. Well, I had replaced these a while back because one of my one of my tops actually broke on one of these, and so I replaced the set because that's the only way they come is in sets. And I'm using them as planters now. And what I'll probably do is um, find something to stick in here, and we'll use these as labels or something. But so these guys. Um, this is his rose moss that he chose. Out of all the plants that I had, he chose rose moss. And then this one is going to be the um, this one in the back here is the same as this one up here, the Gala. Oh God, what was it? Gala Daria. What was it called? Here we go. The this um gal galardia 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 something like that. So that's what's in those. And to simulate our own little greenhouse effect for these, we took little old sandwich bags, and then I took a um rubber band around the top. So we filled them up, uh, we watered them a bit, and then we put this in here to help keep that moisture in there and let it cycle. And we'll see where it goes. If it starts to get moldy and stuff, I'll, I'll take them off. But And then this over here, this one that you see over here, I decided to go ahead and give my fat flower seeds a chance. And these guys like uh, barely cover seeds using soil and 15% coarse sand added. I don't have any sand, so I actually used some aquarium gravel and mixed that in to help with the drainage. Um, keep warm 80 degrees Fahrenheit and damp with high humidity. Place in filtered light. I'm actually probably going to move it because these guys like um, actually like uh, uh, more shade than light, so I'm probably going to move it um, down below here with the heat pad to keep the soil warm. Um, and right now, as you can see, I've got my little temperature gauge up here um, for that. It's at 76 degrees at the moment, so it's not too far below 80. It should be fine. Thing, but um, I did the same thing here because these guys like a lot of humidity because they're from a tropical environment. And this is just to kind of add to that, so. And to filter more of the light. In fact, I might just, like, cover this a little bit and put it on here so it still lets light in, but not directly down on top of it. It'll look like, it'll be kind of like a tree shading over top of it. Um, yeah, it'll be like a tree shading over top of it if I kind of cover this up a little bit. Because um, that's what they like. Uh, they're a, a forced floor type of plant. And uh, so that's how that's going um, so far. So we're doing, we're doing kind of good with our little indoor garden thing here. Um, and then I redid our uh, worm bin. So let's move on over here for that. So my worm bin, I did, look at this. Oh, she 
you doing on foot? Watch this. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna be cleaning their everybody's cages uh, a little later today. So cage cleaning day. Anyway, so here we've got um, the new worm bin. I I opted to give up the three tiered system for now because we're just producing a little bit more waste than what that small three tub system can handle um, because I've been cooking a lot more fresh foods and stuff and so we went here and I just had a little bit of stuff on the bottom here and dumped in everything that was over there with the ones into here and so now we've got this going on ta-da and so now um, I do not have holes drained at the or drilled in the bottom of this. It's just a one tub system. I have holes drilled on the sides and up in here um, for air ventilation. I put it in this other tub because this other tub is dark and uh, it'll hold in uh, or it'll block out a lot of the light so that the worms will actually want to come out during the day and come in here and do stuff. This is all, I mixed it all up. For the most part on the top layer I, I did a little bit of a layer of dirt at the bottom and so um, you can do it this way just a one tub system and it's not going to be a problem the white and stuff you see is eggshells um, I got some coffee ground stuff in there banana peel um, when I made a stew and I, I shredded the, the carrots and stuff. You know, I got carrots and potatoes and celery. Um, I didn't put leftover onion in there because I think I read that that's not necessarily good. Or maybe it was the opposite. And just, I wasn't sure, so I didn't put onion in there. Um, but so all this is in here. It's all old stuff. They've actually gone through. I had a bunch of old lettuce mix that went bad. And most of it, as you can see, isn't even in here anymore. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, they do go through it pretty quick. Um, it's just I didn't have enough room in the other tub. So I'm hoping this tub to be a good size for the amount of waste we produce as a family for now until I can get a different tub system going, uh, for the worms anyway. So, um, but they're in there. They're doing fairly, fairly good. And I can keep it closed off with my little latches here. And our girls, look at this. Look at these girls. Everybody. Oh my goodness. Everybody wants to play with you. Yeah. This is Amelia. And this is Snowball. Oh, wait, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She, uh, as you saw, she went and uh, grabbed my finger with her teeth. She did not do it hard. Um, 
you guys don't. In fact, uh, the only time I've ever had them actually grab onto me, they'll try to pull me with them. Um, or they start trying to groom my fingers. Uh, eat off the dead skin or groom the, uh, the dirt under my nails. Um, they are hungry at the moment, though. And right now, I don't have anything super fresh for them. So, yeah, come on. Try to give them fresh veggies and stuff. And we have leftovers. Let's take the bowl. Today is today is the cream cheese and stuff. I wait till after I can, but these guys really wanted it. And if I do it now, then they might settle down and go sleep on their little hammock, and then I'll just clean out the bottom while they're sleeping. Because I'll just, I just, um, pull it all out and put it into something else, and then put new bedding in there. Um, so I'll use a dustpan and stuff to do it without pulling the whole thing apart. And, uh, yeah, look at them. Aren't they just cute? They need better, they need more stuff. They don't have enough enrichment for my liking. But, anyway, so that's, that's everything that's going on. Um, this is our setup so far. Like I said, I, I upgraded the composting. I will probably go with these bins came with these lids, and these lids actually have a lip all the way around, um, as you can see here, and what I'm going to do is, since I got all this lettuce and stuff, um, lettuce doesn't need super deep, um, it doesn't really need super deep, uh, what's the word, uh, systems because of their roots and stuff. So for some of these, I'm actually going to transplant them over into um, these. I'll probably be able to fit only two per, but uh, that's still six plants that I'll be able to put into separate containers just with these. And then I've got a whole bunch of flower um, things like these of different sizes outside on the porch that I just need to unbury and get to this weekend. Um, which my husband's going to help me with. And here, with indirect light, look at our scarlet. Look at that. It's really taking off. And uh, here soon, I may have to uh, readjust where I have that, uh, that right there. So... Um, we will see. Mostly the bat flower, though. I tried these seeds, oh, what was it, last year or the year before? So these seeds are old. They may not germinate at all. But I've tried them before, and I just couldn't get the heating. I didn't have the proper heat. Um, I didn't have these seeds right here to help me out. So, and this ceramic, I mean, I can already feel it. It, it holds the heat here, and it's pulling the heat up. And this right here is going to tell the temperature. And it's already, it was at 71 degrees here earlier at like, um, it was at 71 degrees here about 30 minutes, maybe an hour ago. And now it's already reading 76.8. So, and it's set to go up to 80. So it should, it should 
get to get there in a minute or get there by the end of the day. And if I have the temperature right, it's going to be high in humidity because I've got all that moisture keeping inside like that. Um, hopefully, hopefully this will make it. Um, I just got to do some more research on how long the germination is. Because all I find on YouTube and stuff so far is how to take care of it once it's already grown. I found another video of somebody planting it, but he didn't have a update video down the road to show if it ever sprouted for him or not. And um, so yeah, I'm running into not being able to find uh, detailed information for the whole console. So this is my bat flower here, and I'm hoping I can get it to um, grow. It's the black variety of it. I like that one a little bit better than the white variety. Um, and yeah, just look up black bat flower. And uh, oh my gosh, they're just they're gorgeous. They're awesome. So anyway, that's going to summarize this. It's been a really long video update, but well, I touched up on some, uh, some somewhat emotional stuff. Um, and here I, um, I thought about it. I have a 20 gallon tank. And I have, I do have this right here, and I just got to figure out where I'm going to put that tank, um, and then I'm going to turn it into a terrarium and see about what I want to grow in it. Because I might have, um, these are coming along, they seem to have taken, they're taking root actually already. Um, I don't see a lot of die off from when I put it in here. Yeah, we got a lot of roots sprouting and, and going in and this is just a, a ground cover and so I'm going to uh, I want to use this in the terrarium um, I haven't decided about this yet but uh, possibly I might um, might do something with this uh, and find other smaller low growing plants to make a little fairy garden in the terrarium so we'll see Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you want more updates and stuff, as soon as I can get myself on some sort of schedule, hopefully. If not, well, then you'll randomly find videos made by me over time. But that's our progress so far. Uh, thanks for watching, and bye.